Hello everyone, Josh from StartReplay.com here, bringing you another headset review, and this time I'm reviewing the Razer Man of War headset, currently retailing at £169.99. If that wasn't enough, I'm also going to be comparing these to its closest competitor, in my opinion, the Steel Series H Wireless, or as they're currently called, the Siberia 800s, retailing for £224.99. Both of these headsets are premium headsets, so if you're in the market for something and spending a lot of money, hopefully one of these will suit your needs. Now, the H-Wireless or Siberia 800s are £55 more than the Razer Man of War. Are they better? Hopefully I'll give you all that information in the next few minutes and you'll be able to make your mind up. I should probably get out of the way first that, of course, if you've seen our most popular headset video, which I don't really count as my favourite or best one I've done, but it has got over 100,000 views. A lot of people were criticizing, saying that I, I chose the H wireless and they were my favorite because I was getting paid by uh, Steel Series. Well, that's not the case. I don't get paid by anyone to say good things. I do, however, get the headsets for free on most occasions and I get to keep them. So yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. I do get to keep these headsets and they are free. I don't have to pay for them. That doesn't mean that I have to rate them as good. If I don't like them, I will say so. Of course, everyone's going to have a different opinion. If you have a different opinion about either of these, if you currently have them, then do hit the comments below this video and I would love to hear what you think of them. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, then tell me why, what can I do to improve? Of course, if you do like what I'm doing on this channel, then don't forget to hit subscribe below this video because then it helps me realize that I'm doing a good job and gives me the energy to continue creating awesome content for you. Now let's talk about the statistics. Both headsets produce 7.1 virtual surround sound when playing on a PC. The Siberia 800s hold up that quality when playing on a PlayStation 4. Whereas if you were to plug the Razer Mano Wars into a PlayStation 4, they only produce 2.0 stereo sound. Now moving on to the size of the drivers. Now the driver is what produces the sound traveling from each cup into your ears. Just because you might have a larger set of drivers doesn't necessarily mean better quality audio, though in most cases that I've experienced it does lend itself, if the driver is bigger, to better bass. Uh, purely because of the size of the unit inside the ear cup, it just packs a bit more punch. So there you go. The Siberia 800s have 40 millimeter drivers. The Razer has 50 millimeter drivers. So yeah, there's a 10 millimeter difference. Does it make a huge difference in the sound quality? You'll find out when I get into detail about the sound in a little bit further in this video. Onto the sensitivity. Now, this is how loud the headset can get and it's rated in decibels. Siberia 800s, 100 decibels. The Razer Mano Wars, 112. So it is undoubtedly the loudest of the two headsets. Moving on to wireless range. Now, this is how far you can take your headset away from its receiver or hub before it cuts out. The Siberia 800s in a straight line can reach up to 10 meters, whereas the Man of Wars in a straight line can reach up to 12 or 14 if you use its adapter for the receiver. Just covering the mics very quickly as well, both are unidirectional. Also, before I forget, here are a couple of mic tests for both the Razer Mano Wars and the Siberia 800s. Okay, so this is me doing a mic test of the Razer Mano War headset, just so you can check out the quality. We have the Siberia 800s mic test versus the Razers. In my opinion, the Razers offer a much more natural portrayal of a voice, and the Siberia 800s sound a bit more like an airline pilot. Lastly, moving on to what is probably the most important feature in a headset, and that's the battery life. The Siberia 800s comes with two interchangeable batteries, each of which last around about 20 hours. So in realistic terms, you've got around about 40 hours gameplay time there uninterrupted. You do need to change it out, of course, when one depletes, but that's done very, very quickly. The Razer Mano Wars on a single charge without the chroma lights on the side showing will get 20 hours on average, um, but then with the chroma lights on, you'll get 14 hours. When that's drained down, you do then need to plug it into charge and wait for the headset to be charge until you can use it again, unless you want to sit really close with a micro USB cable and uh, and play that way, but then again, they wouldn't be wireless, so. In terms of how heavy they are, I've weighed each headset individually on my kitchen scales. And actually the results have come in different to what's listed on the manufacturer's page, so I don't know what's going on there. My kitchen scales aren't broken, but 325 grams for the Steel Series Siberia 800s and for the Razer Mano Wars, 378 grams. 
Ease of use. So let's break it down feature by feature and pit them against one another. In terms of setup for the Siberia 800s, it comes with a hub which is connected via an optical cable and USB power. You can plug it into the wall for power to charge the extra battery inside all the time as opposed to whilst it's in use. Um, but yeah, once that's set up, you just hold down the power button on the headset and it pairs immediately. The razors come with a tiny USB receiver which is really neatly hidden in one of the cups. And if you pull that out, as you can see it's really, really small. You just plug that into any device you're using it on and you sync it straight away. So, and it's actually magnetic as well. When you put it in, it will magnetically suck itself to the cup and then you just press it and, and it's all seamless and, and hidden when you're not using the headset. And it keeps it safe as well, which is nice. So when you get down to the ease of use in that respect with setting it up, the razors are much quicker much easier to set up. With the Siberia 100s, there's lots of fiddling with cables and, and it's just an, an extra something that's sat there on your workstation or, or your gaming setup, so yeah. When it comes to charging, the Razer Man Wars are charged via a micro USB cable connected to the bottom of the left ear cup. On the other side of the fence with the Siberia 800s, there's an option that I'm much more in favour of and that's interchangeable batteries. In the left hand cup of the 800, you simply twist it, the casing comes off and there's a battery that you can remove instantly. Whilst you play, its second battery which it's supplied with is charged in the base unit that the headset's connected to. You simply pop that out, put that in, put the other battery that's depleted in here and then that continues to charge. I really have no idea why headset manufacturers outside of Steel Series are spending so much time pouring resources into other ways to charge, such as magnetic docks with the new Astro 50s, which we'll be covering soon, um, and, and just cable charging. It makes no sense because it's so counterproductive to what a wireless headset should be, wireless. And if you have removable, interchangeable batteries, it removes having to put the headset down and wait for it to charge or sit close to your computer whilst you have the cable attached and it's charging and it's, it's just really annoying. <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea why. Because if, you, if they're really serious about providing good charging options to wireless headsets, they need to have interchangeable batteries. They need to. I, it's just, it's mind boggling why all these new headsets now haven't followed this trend and this, the Siberia 800s, the, you know, H wireless, they've been out over a year Come on, come on, please, please provide some interchangeable batteries in all other headsets and it'll make them so much better and easier to use. Ugh, as you can tell, it's a topic that I'm pretty passionate about and I'm still chuffed to bits that the Siberia 800s have this feature. It's something which is absolutely superb. So in my books, the charging, the Siberia 800s win, uh, win that argument and the Razer, the sorry, Razer 800s, the Razer Mano Wars are, are still stuck in old technology, as far as I'm aware on that front. Both headsets feature permanent retractable microphones. On the Razer, you just pull it out, and on the 800s, you just pull it out. And if you don't want to use it anymore, you just push it back in, and it's not a hindrance anymore. If you want to mute it, then all you need to do is press the power button on the 800s, and the tip of the microphone will light red. The very same goes for the Mano Wars in which you press the little microphone button which it has extra on this headset and the tip will light red. Another important topic is the layout of the buttons. On the Siberia 800s you've got a small power button at the bottom which lights up white to let you know that it's on. At the top of the right ear cup you've also got the wheel for changing the volume. On the Razer Mano Wars you've got two little wheels, one for the mic volume and another for the volume of what you're listening to. The power button also lights up green to let you know that it's on. Both of the headsets beep about 40, 45 minutes before the battery runs out, so then you know you have enough time to finish your game and then charge them afterwards. Design. Now, comfort is a big thing, particularly when you're buying a headset for gaming. You're going to be sat there sometimes for hours on end, maybe playing a competitive match of Overwatch or Call of Duty or Battlefield. And you don't want to feel as though you've got a headset lingering down on your head. You just want great audio, and great comfort. The Siberia 800s have memory foam on the air cups and also on the top band, similarly to the Mano Wars. 
However, the memory foam cushions on the Siberia 800s has this stitching, uh, which doesn't feel as comfortable at the end of the day. The Man of Wars has sort of like a, it doesn't have any stitching on the front of the ear cups, it's more done on the outside, so when it's on your ears, it just feels a little bit uh, comfier. And the memory foam feels closer to that of a, of a Bose or a Beats headphone than the Siberia 800s, which is maybe a little bit firmer. But these are really, really soft, really cushiony, and headband again. Um, it would have been nice for the headband to actually have a little bit more padding, it's quite thin, opposite the larger padding on the Siberia 800s. So yeah, but I do prefer the memory foam on the Razor Manu Wars to the Siberia 800s. When you get down to style, now I like orange, so it's, it's quite cool to have the uh, the orange in the inside of the cups. On the outside, you've got the glossy little ear cups with Steel Series uh, opposite the Razor Manu Wars, which is near enough an old matte design bar the little uh, little bit round each ear cup and, and some glossiness on the inside. When you're picking up, oh, and on the outside, when you're picking up the headsets, you don't want lots of grubby fingerprints, you don't want lots of scratches on the cups, but you do get that on the Steel Series just due to there being a little bit more gloss, particularly where you're gonna be handling the, the headset cups. On the new 840s, I think the silver ear cups are a little bit better in that respect, but for the 800s, I'm not as big a fan of, uh, of glossy stuff. For instance, the new PlayStation 4 Pro is completely matte, whereas my previous one, uh, the original PlayStation 4, has that little glossy bit. So I'm, I'm just nice to get rid of all gloss because it just makes a mess. And I'm and I'm particularly um, yeah fidgety about things like keeping things clean. Um, so if you're like me in that respect, I think the Razer's a lot better having the the matte on the ear cups, especially. The lights, the chroma lighting that comes on when you've got the headset on, now you're not gonna see it because you're gonna have the headset on, but it's cool to know if you've got friends around or if you're in a tournament that you have a really cool, nice looking headset, um, particularly with it just cycling around lots of different colors. It just looks great, it looks fantastic. And the fact you don't really have any of that on the Siberia 800s is a bit of a shame. You don't really have any lights or glitz, uh, it, it is what it is. So yeah, I, I prefer the lights. I love just the cycle of colors, nice. Now what they like to actually wear, the Siberia 800s have a, quite a tight, snug fit. They, they hug the ears and you, you definitely know that's not gonna fall off anytime soon. The Razor Man of Wars, I'd say, have a much lighter fit. The ear cups are a lot bigger. Uh, which means your your ears aren't as um, enclosed as they are on the Siberia 800s, but then again, I have very big ears. It's very, uh, it's, it's a lot less restricted versus the 800s, but then again, these feel a little bit loose on the ear. They could come off if you're, uh, if you're shaking around or being a bit violent after you lost that match on uh, Modern Warfare Remastered, you know, that could become a problem. Overall, I prefer the look of the Razer Mano War headset versus that of the Siberia 800s. Sound quality, which is the best? Well, sound is particularly important when purchasing a gaming headset, because as you well know, if you're in an online game and can't hear everything around you in the best form possible, it could cost you that win. In my opinion, the best one for sound is... the Razer Mano Wars. Due to their bigger drivers and their extra 10 millimeters, it just provides much better bass. Uh, and also because it's uh, it's got a bit more weight to it. So overall the audio is just a much more uh, richer and fuller and the, and the clarity of the dialogue is, is greater than on the Siberia 800s. The Siberia 800s are still a great headset, don't get me wrong. Um, they are fantastic and, and the fact that you can change the batteries uh, and there are interchangeable batteries as opposed to charging it traditionally on the razors still make them really, really great. But overall, when it comes to the all important sound quality, the razors just pip them. Before I end with my conclusion, I also want to bring in one headset which I reviewed recently, which were the Asus ROG Strix Wireless. 
Um, now these are £110 and they don't really match the sound quality you get with these two headsets here, but the actual design and how comfy it is with this band and instead of adjustable ear cups, the band is just a lot better. And they're still pretty, you know, they do a good job. They're, uh, they're a commendable headset for the price and they're wireless as well. That's just one receiver that you put into the computer. Uh, I think I've got it here. So yeah, I mean, they're still a really good recommendation. So if you don't want to spend as much as 170 or 225, then do go for the Asus ones or check out my review, which you can see on the channel. So to reach conclusion, if you're looking for a great PC headset that provides great audio, fantastic design, um, and really can handle anything you throw at it, and it's even great for VR, I use it with my HTC Vive, and really get fantastic audio for the experiences that I'm in, uh, the Razer Man o War is the one for you. And it's £55 less than the Siberia 800s. But then again, if the audio isn't as much of um, uh, an issue for you, and it is still packs really good audio, then do spend an extra £55, particularly if you want a charging solution of where you can just swap out a battery and have another one charging straight away. Uh, that's why, you know, they're, they're both fantastic headsets in their own right. It just depends on what you're looking for. Of course, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Also hit the comments below if you have any questions to things I potentially didn't answer. Also, you can subscribe now via this nice little orange button. So that's it, catch you later.